Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the open hardware ESC status updates in the first ever ESC development board based on the BL Heli S software. So if you missed my previous videos, I'll have the links down below where I went over the schematic and I showed you how an ESC actually works. And then the next steps is to how to build one, design a PCB and also test specific things with the oscilloscope. And it's a really great learning process, which I highly recommend for everyone. And I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. So let's get started. We're gonna do a quick recap here just to give you an idea of how everything is running if you missed the previous videos i'll have the links down below go ahead and check those out uh, so you can get a better idea so an esc requires a couple things now the microcontroller unit which is the brain of the operation possibly a voltage regulator for it more than likely you will have it for this esc we're using the bb2 chip which is based on uh, and, and the Beal Holly S software, which is an open source assembly code software for brushless motors that are without sensor. So they're sensorless motors. And this is the fastest chip that we can use on the Beal Heli S currently, as far as I believe, which is a 48 megahertz microcontroller unit. So this is the brain of all of the operation here. And it's a very simple schematic here. Now this might look pretty daunting at the beginning, but let's actually go over some of this as a quick recap here. So VDD and ground is very basic, which means just the battery, vo I mean the voltage that it needs, which is 3.3 volts and the ground, which is the ground that you have to give it ground. Now in the schematic of the BB2 chip or the data sheet or the specification of this, you need around two bypass capacitors. And this is what we find here. Now these bypass capacitors do just one thing keep the overall voltage stable. They act like mini uh, batteries, if you might say, if you don't know what a capacitor is. So it just smooths out the voltage and keeps everything running smoothly at a at a three point uh, at a stable three point three volt uh, input. So you know under load it doesn't fluctuate and create instability in the system. So that's all these capacitors are doing here. Now as you can tell here we also see the clock. So if we're gonna just basically program it, think of this as a USB input and output in a way uh, to program this guy. You have the data and then you have the clock which syncs everything in together. And then here we see a little resistor and what that that is just it's a pull-up resistor so you just don't get uh, false you know uh, input in from the noise that's coming through the board or anything like that and that's all set and done in the official data sheet of this so I didn't make this up out of anywhere this is what they recommend so that's what I did exactly now let's talk about the other things that are really important to an ESC now we have mux a mux b and mux c and this is the part where the ESC would sense when the motor passed by a phase. And what do I mean by this? Let's take a look here. Now, when you connect any brushless motor, you would have three wires, phase A, phase B, phase C. And this is exactly what we're seeing in the schematic. We're gonna take a look at the PCB board in a bit. So phase A, phase B, phase C. This does not initialize the phases, this only senses it. So when the motor or the magnets bring back a voltage to phase A, it'll know, oh, turn on B, and then it'll turn on phase B, so it can keep the magnets and the motor spinning. Now, if you don't know how a brushless motor works, you can do a quick search online and kind of understand it, but this is out of the scope of this tutorial here. Now here you see input. This is where your input would be for whether it's D shot coming from the flight controller, whether it's PWM coming from a flight controller, Arduino, or whatever. This is where the input would go. It would go in there into a 1K resistor and into the BB2 chip and you're good to go. And also guys, a huge shout out to our sponsor, PCB Way. If it wasn't for them enabling me to create such prototypes and fail miserably every once in a while without really affecting anything because they're providing it free of charge for the open hardware projects that I have. For example, the F7 flight controller, the F4 flight controller that I released. Those are all uh, awesomely sponsored by PCB Way and you should definitely check them out. Now, these six here are very important. These are what will allow each phase to turn on and off. So we have the high output of phase one, and then we also have the low output of phase one. So that's why I call them. It's high input, and the reason why I called it high input is because I was going by the MOSFET driver. Now, we also have something called a MOSFET driver. This is what will be interfacing between the microcontroller unit and the MOSFETs to drive the motors. So we're using N channels and this is the most efficient way from researching online and most ESCs do this and it'll reduce heat, reduce resistance and just give you a better overall experience. So this is just theoretical of just doing my research so I just decided to stick to that.
Now, this is the MOSFET driver, which will enable each MOSFET for each phase, the high and the low. And you might be like, what is high and low? Well, the high and low is each FET for each phase. One, as you can tell, this is the drawing of a uh, transistor or MOSFET right here. See, as you can tell, one of them is connected to ground here. And then the other one's connected to the positive. And this is going to motor A, as you can tell right here. Now, as you can tell, this is pretty much isolated. Motor A is not connected anywhere. So let's actually go in and have a closer look here. So here's the board. So what we saw there was this right here. So let me just figure out how to move this. As you can tell, this, these pins here, if you take a look at that little lighter area, these are all connected together. And the, the lighter area, see what I mean, that it's isolated. So this is not actually touching anything, this, this phase. All of them do the same exact thing. They're connected to one side of each FET. One is going to the positive, one is going to the negative. This one's actually going to the negative, and this one's going to the positive side. And here it's not connected to anything and there's something called dead time and this is where the dead time comes in so we said one of these is going to ground one of these is going to positive and we see two resistors here now these resistor values are still currently unknown but we do know the range and we can find this in data sheets and also just pinning and probing other ESCs now these dictate the dead time with the software so you have a hardware dead time and a software dead time and both of these work together to create your final dead time and you'll be like okay well, what is dead time well dead time is the time that both of these should be completely closed because these act like switches they allow uh, the negative to go through and this allows the positive to go through so let's just say these and again theoretically they have a 50 millisecond uh, they need 50 milliseconds to close out the voltage now if you opened if you had a dead time of 40 milliseconds uh set up with the resistor and the software then you'll have a 10 millisecond short circuit between the positive and the negative which is something you really don't want because you'll fly fr possibly you'll fry something the motor the the fet the resistor the bb2 chip the fet driver one of those things and that is where the dead time comes in and this this is what's isolated and if we take another closer look here you can see that this is that one side that we just saw and this is where the motor pad is now i set it up as motor a here but if you, it just makes it really easy to see so you can see motor a is coming into a pad and it just makes it really simple to understand and try to make the schematic as easy to understand for everybody now we see these things called vs bridge this is the voltage sense bridge so this is where the back emf will come back and come into the mux a and b and c for each obviously for each phase so for phase a b and c and this is where the bb2 chip will know that oh the 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 phase just passed by let's turn on the second phase and that's how it knows uh which way to turn or what what magnets to turn on and what phase to turn on for each fet and if we take a closer look here now this schematic this chip here is found on like 90 percent of all drone escs as well as rc airplane esc this is a mosfet driver you don't need a mosfet driver but it's really nice some of them add additional features some of them do some crazy cool things for example the new matek the new matek esc is using the same fet driver as the kiss escs and that fet driver is from texas instruments it has some pretty insane features that i still don't fully understand but i'm planning on creating a development board for that FET driver. So, but this one is a really cheap 50 cent Chinese one that's used everywhere. And um, it was really difficult to understand how it works because the data sheet was in Chinese and it wasn't very comprehensive, but I finally got it down because I have a ton load of ESCs and I kind of just tracked everything out and tried to make sense of the uh, data sheet to get it. And this is how it is actually connected here. Now, if we take a closer look here, we see that VS bridge comes back to vSense 2. So this is so that the, the, the voltage sense will not just come back to the BB2 chip. It'll also come back to the FET driver. Why? I can't answer that because I still don't even know why it needs to go to both places. Maybe it has some sort of a safety net in a way, like a fail safe. So, you know, you know, you have like a, what is it called? A backup. Uh, so you don't fry a motor, but I just don't know because it's in Chinese, but obviously as time goes on, I'll understand this more and more. And if we take a closer look here, we have the line in one, which will be the, the output coming from the microcontroller because the microcontroller unit will say, okay, turn on the low side of phase one and that'll go in here and then you'll have to find the low one low output see low 
This is a low input one. So this is where the input would come in from the BB2 chip. And this is the low output. So if this gets triggered, then it turns on the low one MOSFET. And if we take a closer look down here, you see here is the, the low output one. And if we follow it, we see that it goes to this resistor. And if we want to see the high output for one, you see it's going to this uh, MOSFET, sorry, these MOSFETs. And these are the resistors here. And again, these values change from, I think, like 10 ohms to 300 ohms, but it's really good to start with a high dead time. So obviously you don't short circuit it because you don't want to short circuit anything. Uh, so yeah, we don't want to see the magic smoke that's inside these components come out or they'll stop working. And it's, you know, once you just sit here, open this and just take a closer look at it, you'll start to understand it. Now, again, you know, you might be like, why is this capacitor in this diode connected to VBAT? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I still don't understand why it needs that, but that's what it needs. And uh, obviously, as time goes on, I'll understand more and I'll relay this information back to you. So, and also guys, if you guys do like this content and if you are learning something, please consider joining my Patreon to help me do more projects like this. I also have the uh, open hardware F7 sens uh, what is it? sensor fusion uh, flight controller coming up very soon. And if you're a Patreon, you also get full access to all of this before anything is released to the public. And you could watch me work on it and update like hour by hour. All right, so let's go to the PCB design. Now, the PCB design is pretty interesting here. It's a pretty big PCB. And the reason why I did this first is for development purposes and testing purposes. So we can think of it as a development board. And then the way I've routed it is to make you understand every single component. And I made them pretty large for anyone who wants to actually build one. I'll also be building an ESC after we do these testing and just, you know, just discover everything about an ESC from the FET drivers to the resistors and just play around with this stuff and see if we can affect noise, affect efficiency, RPM, you know, higher dead times give you more torque. I have everything to test that, which will be really, really interesting. And I'll be showing you how to do this on an oscilloscope as well. Now let's talk about the PCB here because the PCB is very important. And why is that? Now, as you can tell here, we have two boards and you're going to be like, why the hell do you have two boards? This is really stupid. Well, it is and it isn't. And let me explain that. The reason why I did it this way is because I want to create this um, as modular as possible so I can try out different things without having to resolder all these little tiny components every now and then if I wanted to try different MOSFETs, if I wanted to try different resistor values. I wanted to keep it separate. So here, if we take a closer look at the main board, we just have the voltage regulator, the BB2 chip, the MOSFET driver and the voltage divider for each phase. Now the voltage divider, what is a voltage divider? You might say if you don't know, it's just a very inefficient way to step down the voltage. So it's kind of like a voltage regulator because when the BB2 chip senses the phase, you're actually getting back battery voltage and that will fry the BB2 chip because it only takes 3.3 volts on the pins. So what you do is you create two resistors and then you could, there's calculators online and then you can drop your 16.8 volts uh, down to 3.3 volts. You can also drop your 6S LiPo voltage down to uh, what is it called? 3.3 volts as well. Uh, the FET driver can handle up to 25 volts, so we're fine because this is a 4S testing setup. Now, if you are planning on actually doing this as well, what I will be releasing is different backboards for different sized MOSFETs, so you can actually go and try out different things in the market uh, and see which ones you like, and then based upon that, you can apply it to a final board schematic design, which I'll also be releasing as time goes on. I'll go into more detail about this and I'll have everything well documented on my forum or on a GitHub once it's available for public. Currently, all of this is available to my Patreons unless everything until everything has been tested. And uh, yeah, so they basically just gets exclusivity for now. So this is the whole idea here. Forget the 5 volt. We don't actually have a 5 volt here. So the idea is to just replace the uh, main board or we could say the controlling logic. And uh, it's really simple if you take a closer look at it. All you have, as you can tell, we're just outputting. We're getting the voltage sense bridge for each phase. So we know what phase we're on. And then the high output. So high output one, like we showed you. It's the ESC. It's the FET that's on phase motor A. And that's connected to the positive. And then low one is the other one that's connected to the negative. And as you can tell, this is all isolated, isolated, isolated between these pins here. And these resistor values correspond to the dead time. And we just have to play with those along with the firmware as well.
So once I received the board and fully tested it and made sure it's working, there's going to be a lot of interesting content coming in about ESCs and their designs. And then it'll just teach us way more about ESCs and we'll be able to debug specific issues and even possibly make some even better than they currently are, which is going to be really interesting. Now, this might look really complicated in the beginning, like right now, but once I take it step by step and make sure it's working, then it'll make more sense here. Um, I don't want to get into too far into the, des the design of the PCB just yet until I make sure uh, I got it correct, basically. So I don't, uh, you know, give you any bad information that will basically um, not be useful. And that's 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 the reason why I'm not digging too deep into the PCB design, but I'm showing you the board layout here. Now, what's really cool also with this is I broke out most of the important pads, so we'll be able to listen on oscilloscopes and just monitor how everything is running and just take a look if we have issues. For example, the vSense bridge one came in, but for some reason it didn't trigger uh, the second phase. Uh, why is that? Is the dead time too high? And then, you know, just start playing with these lower dead times. Lower dead times obviously means faster throttle response. Uh, but I don't know how that would affect the torque and the final or the, the full RPM if you're going to be able to achieve your full RPM of the motor. And that does affect quite a lot, actually. And uh, from ESC to ESC, you know, some ESCs can give you your full motor power and some can just not as well. And, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm going to find, but it's a really, really interesting uh, project and discovery mission if you might say and it's a really nice learning process as well so we just actually do all this by hand as you can tell back here this is all the positive uh, pads going through and the way that they're going through is they're going through with these here these are little vias like metal pins that go through those little holes that you usually see on ESCs uh, like on the pads those are just basically connecting the back side to the front side uh, so this is, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I'll be making different boards for different types of MOSFETs and different sizes. So you can go ahead and play out with different things as well. And then um, I'll hopefully be able to teach you how to make your own ESC from zero, like a really proper BL Heli S ESC that you'll have full faith in flying with on your quadcopter. And uh, obviously you can also shrink this stuff down. You can, uh, once you learn how to set everything up, you can shrink all of this down and make even smaller uh, ESCs for 20 by 20 micros because you know those are or 16 by 16 boards and stuff. So it'll be a really interesting uh, time. Hopefully we get to see some really nice designs. And um, uh, yeah. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And again, I really hope you guys did learn something here. And if you did, if you can also contribute to my Patreon, that would be super awesome. Because I do have a lot more projects coming on the way and more CNC projects. So uh, any support goes an absolute long way and it'll enable me to keep doing things like this. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down in the comment section, whatever it might be. When you guys see a video and I just get like three comments, it just makes me feel like, is there something wrong? Um, so yeah, just let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And if you guys have any ideas as well you want to see, let me know. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Have a great one. Peace out.